Good morning to my brothers and my sisters, and to my St. John Missionary Baptist Church family, and to any of my brothers and sisters out there in the land today. It is good to be in the house of the Lord once more and again. Uh, it is a very It is a very critical time right now that we are living in. We are living through some times that we have to make a lot of changes within our lives and things that are going on in our lives we need to make changes for. But I want you to be remindful that uh, wisdom is the principal thing, but in all of thy getting, get an understanding. In other words, this coronavirus is out there that's running through our world. And we have to be mindful and listen to our federal, state, and local officials and try to abide by that. In other words, we need to wash our hands on a regular basis. When you go to public places, opening doors, wash your hands when you finish. When you go to the grocery store, push in the buggy carts. When you get your grocery, wash your hands. Even when pumping gas, when you finish pumping gas, wash your hands. We need to be mindful that cleanliness is next to godliness. So we need to be together because we are in this warfare together. And everything that we do, we need to come together to combat and to beat this Canoro um, virus that we are up against. But let us go to a word of God. And let's see what does God has to say about a time and a period like what's going on now. But let us go, go uh, to uh, Isaiah. Isaiah, the 43rd chapter, and let us go to that very, very first verse. And it says, But now, O Jacob, listen to the Lord, who created you. O Israel, the one who formed you, says, Do not be afraid, for I have ransomed you. I have called you by name. You are mine. When you go through deep waters, I will be with you. When you go through rivers of difficulty, you will not drown. When you walk through the fire of oppression, you will not be burned up. The flames will not consume you. For I am the Lord your God the Holy One of Israel, your Savior. I gave Egypt as a ransom for your freedom. I gave Ethiopia and Seba in your place. Others were given in exchange for you. I traded their lives for yours because you are precious to me. You are honored and I love you. Do not be afraid. I am with you. And let's go to another scripture, which is 2 Timothy. 2 Timothy, the first chapter, and beginning at the very, very, uh, that seventh verse. 2 Timothy, the first chapter, and the seventh verse. And we find these readings there. It says, for God has not given us the spirit of fear and timidity, but of power, love, and self-discipline. And I want to use for a subject or uh, a thought today. God has not given us the spirit of fear. So we must not be afraid and, and worried about what's taking place. We, we have to have a sound mind 
But in all of our getting, we must get an understanding and understand what we must do to protect our ourselves. Let us let us go to God in a moment of prayer. Our Father and our God, Father, we love you, we praise you, we worship you, and Father, without you, there's nothing we can do. And Father, we thank you for the word that you have impregnated me with to share with your children in times like these. And we pray, God, that you would look over this entire world and bless where blessings stand in the need of. Father, help us to get a handle on this canola virus that's running rampant. Help us to understand what is being said to us today. Help us to fall in line, God. We love you, God. We praise you. We thank you. And Father, I pray for all of the families that's going through without work, without jobs. God, bless them. Supply their everlasting need. And Father, we love you. We praise you. In Jesus' name, I do pray. And the children of God say it. Amen. Amen to the word of God. God is in control. God is with us and he will take care of us. In the book of Isaiah, Isaiah is explaining to the people that they are about to be punished. He's letting them know that they have done wrong. They, they have did something that wasn't pleasing to God. They did not obey his commandments and they are going to be punished. It, it, it's sort of like, say, whom God loves, God will punish. Uh, how many know about our parents back in old school days that our parents would whip us? In, in other words, it, it wasn't like it is today. You, you, you go stand in the corner. Uh, it, wasn't, it wasn't like that. Are you a time out? I wish it had been some time out back when I was coming up. But no, it wasn't like you're going you, you going to cut your TV off in your bedroom. Didn't have no TV in the bedroom. But those were times like that our parent would whip us. And that whipping would drive any devilish thoughts out of our mind, away from us. And we wouldn't do these things anymore. So God allows things to happen in life today to get us on the right page. And, and you know, and, and, but we do not listen. We don't listen. God has sent storms. We didn't listen. God has sent earthquakes. We did not listen. God has sent tornadoes. He sent volcanoes. He sent hurricanes. We will not listen. He sent droughts. He sent floods. He sent fires burning everywhere. We still would not listen. We want to do what we want to do and not what God wants us to do. In, in other words, when, when we look at the scriptures today, we understand that God is still in the blessing business. And God still loves us, but he wants us to look to him. He wants us to recognize and understand that he is in control. And when we look at our scripture reading, our scripture reading came from the 43rd chapter, but let us back back to the 42nd chapter and, and about that 23rd verse. And let us begin reading some of what God is saying to us that what we ought to be doing and how we ought to be lining ourselves up. But we think that we are in control, in control and not God. But God is the one that is in control control. It's not us. In other words, 
when we back up to the 42nd chapter and, and the 23rd verse, it says, who will hear these lessons from the past and see the ruins that await you in the future? In other words, if you keep going the way you're going, you're headed for destruction. And then it says, who allowed Israel to be robbed and hurt? Who did that? It was God. In other words, we put a lot of things on the devil because we are being whipped or chastised, but God whips his own. He whips us and guides us and trying to form us into being what he wants us to be. And we have to realize when we have done, done wrong. Am I right about that? Your mind go about that? So we have to stay on the right page with God and understand we must follow his commandment. We must follow his commandment. We must be what he wants us to be. We must do these things. And if we don't do these things, then we're not lining up with what God wants us to do. In other words, we're looking at what God's saying. We got to realize, God is saying, but now, O Jacob, now, O Jacob, listen to the Lord who created you. Listen to God who created you. How many know God has a purpose for each and every one of us? God has something for us to do. And also in that reading, it says, O Israel, the one who formed you. In other words, God formed us. He brought us through different compressions and it's almost like the potter's house. He, he molds us and, and, and when you're going through trials and tribulations, don't get mad. Give God praise and thank God for what you're going through. Because if you're going through, you'll come out on the other side. Learn to get in line with God. Just as the songwriters say, must Jesus bear the cross alone and all the world go free? No. There's a cross for everyone. And there's a cross for me. And when you learn how to bear your cross, knowing that God is not going to allow no more to come on you than you can bear. God got you. Whatever takes place, God is in control. He got you. He got your best interest. He's going to look out for you. He's going to watch you. And not only that, it went on to say that, do not be afraid, for I have ransomed you. In other words, you are bought and paid for with a price. With the blood of Jesus, God has bought you. He has paid for you. In other words, the scripture goes on to say that you are mine. God is telling us today that we belong to him. And whatever belongs to him, God is going to take care of it. Be mindful. You are precious to the Lord. God loves you. God wants to bless you. He wants you to line up with the things he has in line for you. And the scripture said, when you go through the waters, meaning when you go through the transition of life, God said, I will be with you. I will be right there by your side. And when you go through difficulties, trying times, things that's happening in life, God say, I never leave you. I'll be right there with you. In other words, these things come not to break you down, but to make you strong. God did not give us the spirit of fear, but of power and a sound mind. God said, don't be afraid. I'm by your side at all times. We can always look up and know God is right by our side. 
It, it, it sort of reminds me of, of the book of Numbers. Numbers, the 21st chapter, and the 8th verse. This is during the time when, when, when the people of Israel got mad at God, got mad at Moses, and they began to complain to Moses, Moses, why did you lead us, you and God lead us out here in the wilderness? Why did you take us away from Egypt? We had food in Egypt. We had places to sleep in Egypt. We had water to drink in Egypt. Why did you bring us out here in this wilderness? God was angry and got mad at the people. And God sent in snakes. And they began to bite the people. Many people died because they were bitten by snakes. And the people finally realized that, you know, we have messed up. We have done wrong. We have not followed the commands of God. And they ran to Moses and said, Moses, Tell God we are sorry. And we are sorry what we did against you. Ask the Lord to forgive us. And, and, and Moses went to God and, and God had, had compassion on the people. And he told Moses, hey Moses, I want you to make a replica of a snake. And Moses built a snake out of bronze, a bronze snake. And he put it up on a pole. And he told them, told the people, when you get bit by a snake, if you look up to this bronze snake, you will be healed. In other words, when you're going through trials and tribulation, you ought to be able to look up and know that God will see you through. Sometimes he had to let things come upon us to break us down that will give us a mind to look up. Jesus told Nicodemus, just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so shall I be lifted up. And if I be lifted up, I draw all men unto me. Am I right about that? So that reminds me of this coronavirus that's going on, that's all over the entire world. God has tried to reach people in the world and wants us to be concerned about one another, wants us to love one another, wants us to be our brothers and sisters' keeper. In other words, we are trying to tear one another down. God has allowed this to happen to open up our mind, to open up our eyes, to bring us together. But he don't want us to be afraid. He said, I will be with you. He said in so many words what he said in 2 Chronicles, the 7th chapter, the 14th verse, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray, seek my faith, turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven. I will heal their land. I will cure up this coronavirus. I will do the undone. I will bless money in their pocket. If they would turn to me and not from doing what they want to do, but obey my commandments. This is a wake up call. Not to be afraid, but to stand up and do what thus says the Lord. If you look up, God will make a way for you. If you look up, God will bless you where you're weak. If you look up, he'll take care of you. If you look up, he will make ways out of no way. It's not about you. It's all about God. Stand firm and look to the Lord. He will take us. Do not be afraid. Because he didn't give us the spirit of fear, but of power and a sound mind. Wisdom is the principal thing. But in all that gain, get an understanding. Know how important it is to wash your hands. Know how important it is to be clean. That will help us to get through with God's help. One thing about God, God wants us to do all we can do. And when we've done our best, God will do the rest. Do I have a witness out there 
in the Arab land today? Do I have a witness that know what I'm talking about? Do I have somebody that say, if God be for you, who can be against you? You know, I, I feel, I feel, I feel the Holy Spirit in this place today. God has enlightened me. God has instilled in me that we are going to be all right. In other words, this too shall pass. He didn't give us the spirit of fear, but of power and a sound mind. And those who are listening, do not be afraid. Stand firm. Do what thus says the Lord. Look up. Recognize him. Start loving on one another. Notice this virus is over the entire world. It's global. It's not just in one country. It's global. God wants all of us to come together and love ye one another. Now here at St. John, I want you to know that we will have opening our doors with a drop box. Those who want to come and pay their tithes and their offering, you can come between 10 and 11.30 today. And then on Wednesday, you missed today, you got Wednesday, you can come from 10 in the morning until 1 p.m. on Wednesday. And I want to say, please, ma'am, please, sir, the ministry is very, very important. And God will honor whatever you bless. Those that may not be a part of this church, you can give as well. We have an online giving. And I want you to know God loves a cheerful giver. And it is a good time right now for you to demonstrate and show to God that you're going to trust him and believe in him. And I'm going to give to St. John Missionary Baptist Church. You can send your uh, tithes and offering in through the mail, 1282 Bradford Heights Road, Gastonia, St. John's Missionary Baptist Church, or you can go online giving. But however you do, do the best that you can. And I want you to know that I'll be praying for you. And Father, I pray that each and every one that gives today, God bless them four folds with the blessing that they stand in the need of. But we know God can bless you in the middle of a turmoil. He can bless you in the middle of a crisis. He can turn things around because of the God that I serve. And I want to say good day to you today, and I hope everything will be well. And definitely my prayers go out to you. We, we love you. We praise you. We thank you. In Jesus' name. And, and next Sunday, it's going to be here on live again. We'll be streaming again next Sunday. There will be a word. The Lord will give us a word to give to his people. What are you going to give me next Sunday? I don't know. But you come next Sunday online and hear what thus says the Lord. Thank you. Keep me in your prayers and pray for one another. And as we move along through this, to God be the glory. Amen.